Well, from Chicago, we're joined by Sarah Flounders uh, with the International Action Center. Welcome to the program, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Uh, Flounders, despite the fact that Afghanistan is on top of the agenda uh, at the upcoming NATO summit in Chicago, but the U.S. media seem to have remained silent on the current events in Afghanistan, uh, especially including the, right, the night raids, torture and drone killings. I mean, what is causing this uh, media blackout, if you will, uh, in the United States? Well, it is a total and complete and very orchestrated media blackout that is taking place. Uh, not a mention of NATO as a criminal conspiracy responsible for an enormous level of violence on the world scale in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Libya, in Syria, uh, really all around the world. And here in Chicago, where there are thousands and thousands of police, National Guard, state police, police brought in from other states and districts arrayed against protesters who are really calling for uh, an end to NATO wars. In other words, these are really uh, nonviolent, anti-war protesters. There have been roundups, raids. They charged a group of young people with terrorism charges and conspiracy for terrorism because they plan to participate in this demonstration. And all of it is calculated in the media here to try to make the population fearful of participating in the demonstration tomorrow. It has been pages and pages of coverage in the newspapers talking about how dangerous it will be to go to the demonstration, talking about the risks that people face from other demonstrators. This is really an effort to use fear on a domestic level in the same way that NATO uses fear in their wars around the world. They want to freeze people, stop people from acting, uh, and do everything that they can to disempower the population here, who, who is beginning to understand the enormous cost of these wars and the cutbacks here at home. And I do want to say that, that people on the street really stop and, and wish us well. Uh, and we will see in what numbers they come out tomorrow. But there's an effort to silence uh, the average person from coming out out of use of all of these fear tactics, which uh, the media is fully complicit, the corporate, the U.S. corporate media, in, in uh, their coverage of the demonstrations. Indeed. But there well, are you... thousands of youth who have arrived in Chicago uh, from the region, from as far as New York, Boston and Washington, but also from the whole region. Indeed. I mean, you spoke of the people on the streets. I mean, protests are uh, taking place, been... uh, not only in Chicago, but elsewhere in the world, too. Uh, what do you think these protests mean for the NATO alliance? Well, it's a very important, this is a really uh, a historic juncture because it has, there have not been demonstrations in the U.S. against NATO, which is a U.S. commanded military alliance. Uh, and it's the first time, even for the anti-war movement here, who has talked about U.S. wars, but not really understood the alliance that, that the U.S. has with the other Western imperialist countries of Western Europe, Canada, and, and the U.S., and the way in which they operate. So this has been an important juncture also for the Occupy Wall Street movement, who has paid a great deal of attention to the banks and their focus on the 1 percent. And their slogan has become that NATO is the tool of the 1 percent. In other words, it's protecting the interests, the enormous power and privilege, the vast wealth of the 1 percent that is leading to such uh, really growing poverty right here at home and enormous dislocation all around the world. So linking those two together, this is a new step forward in consciousness. Uh, the very fact that so many people are willing to demonstrate against NATO and make those links between this U.S. military alliance and their own lives. Uh, the, the youths who've been in the street these last days, uh, and there's been a, quite a number of demonstrations already yesterday, today, uh, along with the big demonstration expected for tomorrow. Indeed. And this is all, as I say, with this huge police presence and so on. Indeed. 
Uh, Ms. Flanders, I mean, the main concept behind the formation of the NATO alliance was uh, defending mainly the North Atlantic region. But today we're seeing that NATO is uh, taking on rather an offensive approach with different bases around the world and involvement in different wars. I mean, just how much of a threat could this be to global peace, especially in the long term? Well, it's absolutely the greatest threat to world peace because it's not only more than 10 years now of war in Afghanistan and drones into Pakistan and threats against Iran and a new war in Syria. It's also the encirclement of Russia, the encirclement of China. It's a new generation of weapons from uh, nuclear uh, submarines to missiles. Uh, this really is the greatest danger to world peace on a very aggressive level. And we also need to look at what's happening in Europe, the refusal of the people of Greece to go along with the austerity measures and of other countries. NATO was originally formed for intervention in Greece against a revolutionary upsurge back in 1948, and it may well be used there again. NATO was a big supporter of the military uh, dictatorship, the military coup in Greece in 1967. So as the Greek people are refusing to go along with austerity, I'm right now on my way to a demonstration at the Greek consulate saying NATO and bankers hands off Greece. So there's, there is a linking of issues today uh, from the young people who are demonstrating against repression to those demonstrating against the banks, uh, Boeing and the military corporations, to those who are acting in solidarity with the people of Greece, standing up to the demands of the bankers uh, for austerity and for further cutbacks. And just to give one example of Greece, who is today facing complete and utter bankruptcy. And why? One of the poorest countries in Europe, and yet they import one, uh, really, they, they rank fourth in the world in terms of military uh, equipment, weapons from the U.S. and Germany that they, that they import. And every restructuring of the debt in, in Greece is to pay for the weapons, not to provide for people's needs. So there is an example of where militarism and war have absolutely destroyed the lives and future of the people of a whole country. Now, in a different scale, that's what's happening here in the U.S., where youth today have no hope of, uh, of, of jobs, uh, uh, where they find that their education has left them indentured or in debt for years into the future, uh, where there is a real shutdown in health care, where there's no public housing being built on any level at all. So, that is the cost of endless war here in the U.S. It's also the cost of war and militarism in Greece. And we know the havoc that it has created in Afghanistan, on the border in Pakistan, uh, drone attacks into Yemen, and, and the horror that, uh, that NATO and U.S. war is creating in Syria, right on the border, uh, the, the Turkish border. So all of this is, shows that NATO is the danger today, uh, a, a really a military conspiracy of the wealthiest and most powerful attempting to continue their rule through vast repression. Indeed. All right. Uh, I'm sorry we have to leave it there. Many thanks uh, to Sarah Flounders with the International Action Center from Chicago. Thanks for your time there, ma'am.